All right, what's up, everybody? I am doing an impact interview with Gina Myers. She is the number one female mortgage professional in the state of Virginia. Did I get that right, Gina? You did. Thank you so much. Yep. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Um, you know, she she is truly one of America's best mortgage professionals. Uh, the you know not only the amount of business that she does, the amount of families that she serves but the quality and the advice in the way that she delivers that uh, she's consistently either number one among the top two at cross country at being a mortgage coach, delivering a total cost analysis to families. I mean, that's, I think a big deal, uh, not because I'm the founder of mortgage coach, because I just think when you look at the process you go through to give more than a fee worksheet to a consumer, there's, there's a lot more value transformed. Would you agree with that, Gina? 100%. Yeah, it's the, it's the number one thing I say to <clears throat> loan officers or people that have recently joined cross country. They're asking me, can I sit with you? Can I watch? And I'm like, yeah, just do you have mortgage coach? You know, <laughs> because it, it really is a game changer. And it's been a, an incredible impact to my business over the last, you know, I think I've been using it now for four plus years, but the last two years, implementing that into my process has, has really helped me do convert a lot more business and, and better business. Yeah. And I, I think at this point I need to make a Gina Myers playlist. Cause I think this might be the fifth or sixth interview and you, you always just do an incredible job. She's, she's also been a representative in a local school uh, in Virginia uh, with first home IQ. Uh, I know you and Kristen collaborated and you did some type of financial literacy training at it. Was it a high school? Yeah. So Madison High School here locally in Vienna, Virginia, a local good friend realtor um, of mine asked me if I could participate in the WINGS program. So their high school seniors, before they graduate, they do a mentorship week and they choose, um, you know, a, a, an industry. And they these these kids, our high school students, seniors chose real estate. So they followed the realtor around and she asked me, can they come in for a day for mortgage, which I'm sure they were over the moon excited about mortgage, but uh, your team was so instrumental in helping me because it, it gave me the basics of being able to bring it to a level where it would be relatable to them. And so I, I took some pieces of it, presented it to them. And then, as I was mentioning earlier, I made them role play with me and I told them, you know, who they were, what type of job they had, what their income is, was how much money they had in the bank, uh, what their credit score was. And then I basically in kind of, I, I interviewed them, I'll say, as far as my process goes with new clients. And then fast forward, they said it was a lot easier than they thought. I used the mortgage coach. Love and that. I, yeah. Went through the whole screen and it, I think I kept their attention probably the most during that, during that time. Really? So you, uh, did you use a rep versus own? That yes, I did. Uh, do I have it? Yeah, I should pull that one up. That was I'll, I'll pull that one up too. Um, I did a rent versus buy for one of them, and then the other one I made them decide what was most important to them, whether it was the monthly payment, or the cash to close, or deciding whether to rent or buy. So yeah, I have a rent versus buy. I use that all the time. I love that. I love that. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing about it. Uh, before we get into just what you're doing to get ahead of the NAR settlement and how you're helping realtors in in your market, how how are you doing? You know, how's volume? How's you know how's business for you right now? Great, yeah. Um, business is going really well. It's definitely better than last year. So I think through June I should be over sixty million, and that is I think it's like I'm gonna say ninety units. I can't remember exactly. Um, okay, wait, I do have numbers right here. I think it was 57 million, 83 units through, through current. And then obviously through the end of June, I'll be over 60 at probably 90, 95 units. So, right so that's you're definitely on track for doing more than last year. Yeah. And what'd you do last year? I did about 90 units for 150, 90 million for, um, 150 units. Okay. Yeah. So you're definitely going to cross a hundred million and then yeah. it's like you're on pace for 120 million and killing it. Well, I mean, that's, I, I don't know if you know it or not, but I mean, that puts you in like the 1% of the 1%. So that's, I guess that's why you're number one in your state. Uh, so what, what are you doing to be successful and, and specifically anything that you're doing to help realtors 
you know, we're a couple months until these NAR settlement changes go into effect in August. You know, what are you, what are you doing to get ahead of it? You know, you had asked me about doing this interview with the NAR settlement and it, in, in our market, it isn't as much of a conversation as it is in other markets. Um, but so kind of what I, what I've thought about is what am I doing specifically to help them? One, we have, I actually have an event next week, uh, entitled exactly what to say, very similar to this meeting, probably about value proposition. Um, you know, though, value proposition is a very heavy phrase, and I think it's a little intimidating. So I don't think people will have to have a one-liner or a pitch that every time they go into a meeting with a potential buyer or seller, they have to pitch specifically to that to that, um, to the NAR or the commission rather what I've seen and what I personally do is, you know, help clients feel like they, they have to be working with me versus anyone else because of my process and because of the questions that I ask. And so that's back to your initial question. What have I been doing to do so much business in a very difficult market. Um, I actually think this, this market suits me really well, or, or I figured out a way to suit my own, you know, my own way of doing business to the market. What I mean by that is, um, in years past, I felt like more leads solved all problems and I would just help everybody. And I felt like I was spinning out of control. Fast forward, I was like, I just want to work with people I like, I trust, that respect me, that bring me solid business, and um, that I help them be more successful. So, what does that look like? You know, I have actually my list of realtors, and the top, the top ten are like two thirds of my business, um, and so I really lean into those people, and I get very close with them, and I build very tight relationships. Um, and, and so it's a, it's a lot of relationship based. Um, and then what I'm planning on doing further is explaining to them my process, because I think the process that I have could relate to how they, you know, how, how they can help their clients and, and stand out without actually having to say things about you. I, I deserve X percent commission, you know, and the, the consumer is so, they're overwhelmed by all that. They, they only buy houses. What, what's the statistic like three or four times in their lifetime. They really, they, we know so much more about what's going on than they ever will or care to know. And they care about how, what's my monthly payment going to be? Um, do I qualify? And can you help me win the, the home I want? Because it's competitive. There's not much inventory. So that's what they care about. And so I love um, Sean Herrero. I know you're a big fan of Sean and he's here. We're in the same company. And I, on one of his interviews, he said something that really resonated with me. He said, you know, if I ever come across a client that is, hey, I just want to know your rate. That's not really our avatar type of client. And so uh, just lose early, you know, and, and so I've really taken that to heart and I've lose early to people that aren't my ideal buyer or, you know, type of person that I want to work with. Um, has he, have you talked to him about that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I've interviewed Sean, uh, a lot of times. I, I think, I think we have a Sean Herrero playlist in the YouTube channel and, uh, his, his video is currently at the front of the list. I've got a, a playlist called getting ahead of the NAR settlement mm -hmm. in our YouTube channel. His is the first one, uh, it's had over 5,000 views. Wow. Uh, you know, he, he, he really does an incredible job and just, just hearing you talk, I think and anyone listening to this, I hope you're like connecting the dots that she's just a really valuable advisor. Like if you're, and I have a feeling that if a consumer meets you by the way you show up, by the way that you ask questions, by the way that you're, you're solving problems for that consumer, uh, you're just a problem solver and you're an advice giver. And, and then my guess is you're, you're an extension of the advice for realtors. And that's a really valuable value proposition. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts on, on the other side of this NAR settlement? I think mm -hmm. agents 
that are very transactional and they're not, um, you know, they're not providing advice beyond the transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of that is making a great mortgage decision, building wealth with real estate. Like mm -hmm. I, I feel like you're going to gain market share and you're going to become even more obviously valuable to real estate agents because of your process and because of your advice. Do you see that? Oh, that's like the most exciting part that I see and experience. Um, I could tell you stories, you know, any day, like two days ago, you know, um, okay, uh, we have clients, they've written on a few different properties. They've been very particular and, you know, we really want them to go under contract, of course. And I get a message from my VIP realtor, Gina, um, the listing agent is, you know, I'll make up a name, Maggie, and she loves you, capital letters, right? So now what's happening is the people that are doing the business are doing the very, very much majority of all the business. And I've already worked with them many times, you know? So, so now it's like, we are now winning deals for our clients because of the relationships, the trust, the, um, you know, the lack of any surprises that these people will experience. And, and they know that by working with me, that, that it will be very smooth. And so I'm helping not only my clients, but the realtor partner do more business. And I see that with other realtors as well, because they're, whoever's really doing the business and the confident and getting it done and knows their worth, they're, we're all doing more together and the others are just falling to the wayside. So it actually, I mean, I love it. I think it's fabulous because I think there are a lot of onesie twosie realtors out there. And again, that's part of my, my conversation with the buyers when they call me and I'll say, how did we get connected? Oh, Laura made the introduction. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm, you know, you hit the jackpot by meeting her. You know what I mean? realtors are not created equal. And I work with many, many of them and you met the best in the region. Right. And I'll talk about how they're killer negotiators and how they'll guide them to the right decision and how they'll take all the, you know, all the stress and just boil it down and be very direct with them. So I'm, you know, putting these realtor partners on, on a pedestal, and then I'm helping them and the clients win because of all these relationships. And it's like, so fun, you know, it's like, the most fun for me. Well, well I want to spend some time kind of unpacking some borrower stories and, you know, where you had sure. a home buyer and you delivered a mortgage coach. Sure. But before I do that, you, I think you just gave us a glimpse in how you edify an agent. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I would love just to unpack that a little bit. How much, like when you think of someone you were referred to, the agent um, referred you, how, how many minutes are you edifying that agent? And you gave me a little bit of a framework, you know, there's like a headline, a value statement. And then it sounds like you're really in a sincere unpacking their gifts. But is this, is that like 30 seconds? Is that like three minutes? Like how much time do you think you spend on average edifying and, you know, boosting your agent in the mind of a buyer? Sure. I mean, I'll read the room, you know, it depends if they already know them and then, we'll, you know, if they know them, we'll probably talk about it's them tailored. a little bit longer. Yeah. If not, and, and I, you know, maybe they're a little standoffish and, and I, I will be a little bit more condensed about it. So I would say at least 20 seconds to a minute, but I do the same thing every time. And, and that's actually what I would relay to realtors and other lenders in, in this situation. So what I mean by that is when the referral comes in, I schedule the meeting, you know, obviously speed to lead. So we're responding quickly. And most important is we're getting them on video. So my conversion has gone way up when I'm seeing the clients at least three times during the transaction. The first conversation, I don't make them apply, but if they want to fine, but the first is a 15 minute, um, letting them know the process. Right. So again, if you're, if I'm going to share with a realtor about how they can separate themselves, it's just being very clear, warm, personable, right. I can read them. Um, and, and I can see the anxiety coming down because buying a house is a huge decision and a mortgage loan is their biggest financial decision. And I don't know that we think about that enough. So they're definitely anxious to speak with me, whether they're, you know, a first time home buyer or seasoned home buyer. Um, 
And so the first conversation is, Hey, so nice to meet you. Thanks for taking the time. How did you meet? How do you know so-and-so? And And then I, I respond with whether they, you know, whether I just described, whether they know them either very well, it's like, Oh, well then, you know, she's amazing. Oh my gosh. Everyone loves her. She's such a pillar of the community. And like, wow, you, how lucky are all of us to be able to work with the best of the best. She's so well-respected. I could just tell you a story this weekend. I usually tell a lot of like stories because it's the best way that I, and they're, they're real, right? Because I just did it. So, so I'll say, oh my gosh, this weekend, we just had the situation where the client won because they knew Laura so well, and I had worked with them and they were like, look, you just have to get to this point and you're the winning offer. And, and so, you know, that's just sort of setting the stage. Um, after that, I'll ask them what's prompted you to consider buying a home because it's a very open-ended question. And I just want to hear what's most important to them or what they're most concerned about. And then from there, you know, I'll, I'll ask the basics, um, uh, income assets, credit in, in a very nicer way. Like, Oh, tell me what you do for a living. Right. And then maybe share I don't know, if there's any relation there or something like that. Um, once we get the basics though, my next main goal is to give them positive feedback, you know, um, and it's, it's about, wow, like whoever, whoever helped you with, you know, making sure you had such great credit, please call and thank them. This is unbelievable to be a first time home buyer and have an 800 credit score is unheard of. You, you crush that, you know, I'm just really trying to pump them up. Um, so that I can say, look, everything you've just told me sounds excellent. You absolutely can become a homeowner. And what I want to show you next, um, are those, are, you know, is, 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 are those loan options where we can make sure you're comfortable with whatever they say is most important, you know? Um, yeah. And I love, love, love the rent versus buy analysis because I do have a lot of single first time home buyers or people that are trying to do this on their own. And that's where that, um, the tax benefit is like just crushing, especially with a higher interest rate environment. Right. I'll say, look, yeah. Elephant in the room it, rates are rates are elevated for sure. But what people don't realize is now we have a much bigger tax benefit. Um, and so when I can show them that on a, a screen share, um, that's actually the next call, right? So after, after we do all this and I tell them what to expect, they say to me, what are the next steps? I say, I'm going to email you with the link to the application. We'll get your information, pre-underwrite the loan, and then we'll schedule the time. So that's the first call. Second is this, the mortgage coach where, in my opinion, it's very transparent. It's a lot of education for them. I get a lot of aha moments. I'm manipulating it. You taught me how to do that. So I'm changing things while we're in there and they'll say, well, what if we put more money down, less money down? Can you explain to me points? Um, you know, and, and people will say, I want a lower rate. How low do you want? Okay, sure. And let's plug in the extra points for that. And so it's just so nice to have that upfront conversation, building trust with them. Love and then it. They, this past week, actually two days ago, I had clients that just went under contract. I share my, the, obviously the next call is a lock call, right? Where I'm now sharing my screen again. And at that point, I'm not even talking about interest rates because they can just see them. And I'll say, do you like the option, the first column or the second column? What do you think about this or that? Or what's your comfort level? And they just say, oh yeah, Gina, we really like the no point option. Let's go with it. And so it's really easy. And the best was the other day, the client said, um, please tell Gladys, my pre-approval specialist, we love her videos. Um, we're always like wondering, um, what's Gladys wearing today? (laughs) They're just so cute about like seeing her, hearing her. And they always say, and then she guides us through it. Click on the more info tab. And then, you know, it's just really sweet how people enjoy the videos. And what percentage of the mortgage coaches are you putting a video on? Do you think? Well, Gladys really does all of them. So we, so I'm, recently you're having the conversation that a team member is is adding that yeah so you've taught me that because i thought oh you just do the mortgage coach send the video and that's it and i really was missing out on the live call um my conversion has gone way up because of the live video share call with mortgage coach but i tell them look i know we don't have time to do this every single house that you make an offer on. So Gladys 
uh, my pre-approval specialist does an amazing job of sending up data loan options with her video. Love it. Well, let's get into a couple stories and strategies and things that you're doing in the market. And then let's try to connect, connect those to how does it help you communicate your value to realtors and, and how does it enhance the value of a realtor. By, by the way, tell me if you agree with this. And it was shot, by the way, Sean has just been killed it lately. Mm -hmm. He's like, realtors need to stop being realtors and start being real estate advisors. And I was like, I'm going to be stealing that. Like, what are your, what are your thoughts on realtors? Stop being, I'm sorry, I was looking at a mortgage coach. Stop being what? A realtor and start being a real estate advisor. You know, so go, you know, be a real estate advisor. It's, you know, more than, I think it's less transactional and more advice-based thoughts. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that's what people, uh, the consumers are, uh, they're fearful of because they they feel like, oh, this person, this transaction, this person's gonna make $30,000. This is ridiculous, you know, and they don't really understand all the effort and the value and the advice th that, that the realtor offers. Um, so yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I don't, maybe they could change their, change their, um, names <laughs> in some, in some way or their, their title. Cool. We'll show it on the screen and let's check out a story. If you're watching this in YouTube and you've got a question or a comment or a favorite takeaway, put that down below. Also, if you're watching this live in our group, uh, feel free to give it a like or ask questions live. I'll go check that out in a second. All right. So I'll share my screen. So this one is, I guess, in my opinion, kind of basic, but if it, as it relates to realtor commission. So I did have, and really very few. So if I already closed 83 loans so far this year, I would say two have had some sort of realtor commission reduction on the other side. So it's not very common in our market yet, but, but how we got around it was very simply, um, by increasing the sales price and asking for a seller credit, you know? So if the purchase price is 500,000, um, and there was no seller credit and the buyer was paying a percentage of the commission, then, um, you know, then their cash to close would be significantly higher. Uh, otherwise, if we increase the sales price 507 to cover some of that commission, the cash to close is lower. And really, you don't see much change in the monthly payment, right? Because $7,000 financed over 30 years is $41. You know what I mean? So it's not much difference. Um, but, but when I get into the closing costs, and there's a few ways I was doing this is whether you show it as a contribution or not. But, um, but I'm showing it, this one is the real estate commission for option one. And then option two was showing a seller credit. So then here I'll show the real estate commission and then including a, a seller credit. So that's just a way because, you know, first time home buyers, they don't have extra cash typically. Um, and so it's a way of solving for, or letting them know in advance that, there are ways to, to work around it and to not be so afraid of it. Because my concern is that people that think that they have to pay for the realtor commission will be, will be stuck, you know, or unable to buy. Um, does that make sense? It, it does. And, and, and to every mortgage professional watch this, and if there's realtors watching it, like if you're not using mortgage coach, how are you, how are you even showing this? So I think as a as an agent, agents are going to want to work with loan officers that can show the difference and show options. Um, so, anyways, cool to see that you're, you're you've got this, and this is one of your your go tos. Mm -hmm. Another one. This is probably one I do all the all the time. Um, the rent versus buy. So, I I apologize. It does look a little confusing, but um, what I'll do is explain. So. The client initially wanted to buy a, a $450,000 condo. And if you can see the, the monthly payment included a very high HOA, you know, 468 per month. So they kept thinking they needed to be at 450 because they wanted their monthly payment at 2,800. 
And I was like, well, no, the payment's going to be a little bit higher, but also that, you know, nearly $500 HOA does tip it up beyond their comfort zone. So I initially showed them these two. And then they said, well, I, I really, really want to be cash out of pocket 2,800. So then I showed them a $300,000 condo with an HOA that was similar to what they were seeing in the market. And then compared to a $380,000 single family home uh, without an HOA. So they, they were able to grasp that. But what I love is really the rent versus buy. So in the rent column, of course, this person was at the time paying um, to 2,500, but they were comfortable paying up to 28. So then what I was able to show them was, okay, let's study the net monthly payment here because right now you're only receiving the standard tax deduction. And I believe their tax bracket was somewhere around 24%. And of course, they have no principal as part of the mortgage loan. So yes, their net monthly payment is, is closer to 2200 And we don't even, I mean, the tax benefit isn't related to, to renting necessarily, but it is, I think, a good comparison. And what most people are shocked by is the tax benefit for owning, especially at a higher price point, is double or triple, Right. So I'm saying to them, no, you're not going to experience that monthly, but at the end of the year, this would, this would have been, you know, reflective of what your true payment would be. And then of course, when I show the principal portion, the combination of those two are so great that I say, you know, if you really wanted your payments to be about 2,800, it, in essence, it is right. Because after the tax benefit and the forced savings, the numbers get closer to where you want to be. Now it's, it's not for everybody because sometimes people just really have that monthly in monthly out number, but I do think this really opens their eyes to the possibilities. And then of course, I, I always scroll down here and show them the net worth. And a lot of times my first time home buyers are older, right? Than, than typical first time home buyers in previous years. They're in their late 30s and uh, sometimes 40, right? My average home buyer. And so they have a lot of friends who have experienced this already, the, the net worth component. And I say, you know, if you rented, of course you would, well, not of course, but I would hope you would invest some of that money that you would have otherwise used um, and into like a low yield savings account because the, the bar to do that is so low, right? It's four to 5% on any, you know, any of those sort of low yield savings accounts right now. But I'll say if you, you know, if you took that money and invested it into a home, this is what your friends have experienced or are continuing to experience. And this is where you tell me you want to be. You know what I mean? I love, I love that. And and by the way, that's a you you just gave a bit of a class on financial literacy. I mean, you, you showed them how home appreciation works with mortgage leverage. You you showed them how you can buy a home and 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 still invest and make money. Mm -hmm. uh, you're 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 showing them the total cost over time, and and I I have you know, like at first home IQ we consider this by by the age of sixteen everyone should know how how to save money and compound interest works. Like I I advocate kids get like um acorn and yes. are, you, are you familiar with the acorn app i i'm familiar with it i don't use it but yes i'm familiar with it i think there's a couple other apps but yeah mm -hmm. yeah there's a couple others but you know robin hood uh mm -hmm. we're 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 gonna try to partner with both of those at first home iq but nice. you know, by 18 they should know how credit works and by 21 they should know how mortgage interest works which kind of tees up a question when you show that to most of your customers, which I'm sure they're older than 21, mm -hmm. do they really know how home appreciation works with all this? Or is it like, oh, wow, I, I never thought of it that way. You know, how many people are really kind of learning how mortgage, how appreciation with mortgage leverage works? What percentage of people you think? I mean, you know, when I ask them how, what's prompted you to consider buying a home, people respond to me like, I feel like I should, 
you know, like it, I think inherently people know because probably what they've really experienced is the success of their parents, right? That their parents, whether professionally, no matter what they do, but if they've owned a home, right? The majority of people have over 50% equity in their homes. Um, and, and so I think they just inherently know it, but I don't know that they really understand it by any means. And so this is a way to show them and it's very specific to them, which is what I like most about it because you can find all kinds of things on social media and you can ask chat GPT, whatever you want. Right. But like, I love this opportunity with using mortgage coach, uh, because it's specific to them, you know, and, and it's exciting to see, to see their generational wealth, um, opportunity right in front of their eyes. Scroll back down to the net worth piece. The other, the other thing that I think is really valuable there is you're as a as a mortgage coach and someone that's giving this as part of your pre approval process, you're you're truly expanding the value prop of an agent. Like you're you're not just doing a pre approval. You're showing people the wealth creation of a condo versus a single family. You're showing them you know different price points. I would have to think that this is tangible value beyond getting someone a mortgage that's going to actually help the realtor justify uh, higher compensation and be more valuable. Any thoughts on that? And are you leaning into that? Are you making sure that all your realtors know that you're doing this? Um, yes. So I always welcome them to join me on these calls, but I will also, so we always email the the scenarios or, you know, if they're asking for numbers for a specific property, we'll send them the specific um, mortgage coach uh, so that they can see it and watch it. And so I do get a lot of feedback on that. The rent versus buy has definitely landed me way more business than I would have had otherwise, because when, you know, after the call, I always send notes to the agents and give the summary um, so that's really helpful, but then they're also hearing it from their client as well. And so when the the client has, you know, their eyes opened by this presentation, that is light years beyond what everyone else is doing. They're, they're like, Gina, here's my next one. Here's my next one. Here's my next one. Right. How many people that these realtors are working with anyone and they're like, okay, I got these yesterday. I mean, I had a call, Hey Gina, this woman, I've been trying to help her buy a, uh, or get into another rental, but she earned a couple hundred thousand dollars, this woman. And she was like, she, you know, this, there was one property that was rent or buy and she would love to meet with you. Right. So they, I am the first thought, you know, because what, what the heck is a rate sheet going to do from online lender to really help these people who are nervous about what they hear in the market, interest rates, um, you know, affordability, how much money the, I, you'd be shocked. The woman said, Oh, but I don't have the 20%. I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> you know, it's, and so I right there showed her scenarios. Um, and, and she was like, great, I'm going to apply because I really want to consider this. Um, so, you know, I've definitely received so much more business by using this strategy, whether they see, whether the realtor actually sees it or not, you know, Cool. Well, any other TCAs you want to show before we uh, go into some other questions and things that will help anyone? You know, I always those? show this one, but it the the appraisal gap coverage is probably one of my favorites, just because it it like helps so many people um, in a competitive market, and I I think it helps buyers get that edge, whatever they need, a couple thousand, right, or waiving appraisal. Um, and, and so this is really straightforward to me because I do it all the time, but the first column I say, okay, so like, this is, oh, there's my video. This is, um, this is what you, you know, you would buy the house at at 500,000 with 10% down. Here's your monthly payment and your cash to close. Um, you know, let's just say, I'll say, what do you think the worst case is that the property will appraise? Okay. 475. All right. So if it appraises at 475, you're still going to put your 10% down. So you're still going to be at 450, but your loan to value ratio is now just 
just under 95%. So all it changes, I'll say, look at the monthly payment difference. You know, it's, it's, oh, what is that? Like $18 a month, right? And the difference there is the monthly mortgage insurance increased from 4477 to 6343. And so what most people think they have to do is they think they have to keep the loan to value the same. And you're, this puts you outside of your comfort level on the cash to close number. You do not have to do that at all. This is keeping you exactly in your comfort level for the cash to close and the monthly cha payment changes by 20 bucks. So the risk is so much lower. I tell people all the time, my favorite part of the job is strategy, helping them win, helping them be perceived as the best offer, right? And so this allows me to educate the client and then the realtor feels like, okay, we can actually go win this thing by waiving the appraisal or waiving financing or, um, you know, wh whatever is important to them. But again, my job is to get the client to feel comfortable so that the realtor can do their job so we can win more business together and I can help everyone be more successful. Cool. So first of all, please share links to these mortgage coach presentations. If you're watching this in YouTube, the links will be down below. Uh, you can go ahead and stop sharing the screen. So before I get into just closing questions around uh, winning with realtors in this market, um, yeah. any, any takeaways from that experience that you had teaching your kids? Because I always like to get a success story for a first home like you. And, yeah. and I do think loan officers and realtors, by going out into the local markets, they could do more loans, sell more homes, and help the next generation. Any 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 lessons learned on that or any advice that you have for any real estate or mortgage professionals that want to do that? Yeah, I, I enjoyed educating them about it, but what I made them do is role play with me. So I made, made uh, each of them, I had like, you know, I made up a silly name related to the school mascot. And then I said, okay, you're uh, a Southwest air, airplane pilot. You earn 120,000 per year. You have $30,000 in the bank. Um, your parents told you they would give you a little bit of money, but they don't know how much, you know, I, I gave them a whole case study and then I, I role played with them about them calling me and I asked them questions and then I screen shared with them. Um, that was probably my, my biggest takeaway and, and a lot of fun. The client, the clients, the kids told me that their biggest takeaway was that it was so much easier than they realized and that the importance of credit. So we spent a lot of time about talking about credit and, you know, how it's just so incredibly important to, to not, to not spend more than what you have and to not uh, open up credit cards just to save 5%. And, you know, if you forget to pay something like how impactful that can be. Um, so hopefully they, they left learning with some, with some financial IQ. And I, you know, it's funny. Cause then one of the, one of the boys was like, yeah, he was just really sweet. He he said, "Oh, my stepmom just bought a house. Well, you probably helped her. Like I'm the only loan officer around." And I was like, "Oh no, I don't think I did." But then that night I was at home, and that person added me on LinkedIn, <laughs> the, yes. the parent. So I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I you know that excited me because I had an impact on her stepson, and now she's you know a professional in the community following me. Uh, and not that I was trying to go for that, but it it made me feel good that that kid went home and. Tell, tell their parents what they learned. Well, and I think they they will. I mean, they're they're it, it it is a big deal when you do a great job of inspiring them. They're gonna they're gonna talk to their parents. Their parents are gonna hear about it. So cool. So any any closing thoughts? You've got the mortgage coach community here. You've got a lot of top mortgage professionals looking to be the lighthouse, looking to add value in this market. Any any closing thoughts that either you yourself are focused on or you're advocating to other loan officers, any, any closing thoughts on it? Yeah. I mean, I, I can't stress enough the importance of having a, a general process, but getting in front of the client and walking them through the, the steps, right. And being clear and asking a lot of questions and, you know, just, just being very communicative. Um, I use mortgage to be, to be different, to be unique and, 
um, I get a lot of that feedback. I mean, if you look at all my testimonials and people that have written after the closing, their first thing is, you know, Gina, she, we, I, I understood the process from start to finish. She screen shared with me. I understood exactly what I was getting into every step of the way, you know? And, and so that's what hits home for me because I, it's, I just, it's basic, right? It's, I wish people would stop treating themselves like commodities and like interest rates. And that's been my most favorite experience in the last two years is I barely talk about interest rates. You know, I talk about what is most important to them. Um, how do we get there? How do we help them be successful, comfortable, confident, get the winning offer? Um, yeah, I, I don't talk about rates. And so when people call me with other companies, what's your rate here? What's the rate here? I'm like, why, how are you even at this point? <laughs> like, right. You know, you are an advisor, you are not a commodity. So change, I would say, just keep trying to change your mindset that you are, you know, you're there to help them strategize, help them feel confident, comfortable, rather than I'm here to offer you a rate. Like, please stop doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Stop selling rates and loans and start selling, uh, informed decisions, mortgage strategies, ways of building wealth with real estate better. So Gina, you're a complete inspiration to the industry. I am looking forward to having you as an active advisor in the First Home IQ community. And thanks for being such an awesome mortgage coach. I really appreciate you. Thanks for having me as always, Dave. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you. Take care, everybody. If you got value from this, make sure you give it a like, share it with your mortgage friends. Uh, you know, if you are not subscribed to the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel, subscribe today. Take care, everybody. This is a wrap. And hang on, Jay.